Hi, I'm Angie Monco. I guide mindful women leaders to overcome overwhelm and heal from hidden grief so that they can feel relaxed, supported, and free to create a life they love. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about women leadership starts with stopping people pleasing. You know, to be an effective leader with impact, we need to be able to stop people pleasing and start being true to ourselves. So today I want to discuss, you know, where did this habit come from of people pleasing? I'll look at the definition of a woman leader, um, how we get derailed when we people please, and how to reclaim our power. And what, finally, is available to us when we arrest this people pleasing habit? Hint, it's what we really want. So I want to ask you, are you a woman leader? For the full details of this, see the rest of my blog. So here are a few ways that I define a woman leader. This is somebody who has a great deal of self-respect. So that's really what the cornerstone is to self-leadership. So because of that self-respect, she treats other people with sovereignty and dignity and respect. Um, she realizes that she doesn't control what other people think of her. And so she's given up trying to control them and what they think. Um, she will comply of what's being asked for, of her if it makes sense to her moral compass. She will not comply if it feels wrong or it goes against her intuition. She thinks for herself and she gains confidence as a result of a connection to a higher power, however she defines that. In other words, she will not default to compliance if she releases the need to be liked because she's trusting her own self, her own intuition, her own guidance. So how do we become people pleasers? Here are five ways. The first one I want to discuss is we were taught to hyper achieve to be acceptable. Um, you know, that masculine driven energy to just go, go, go and perform and produce. When I was in eighth grade, my dad challenged me to make straight A's, no A minuses, and he'd pay me $500. And that set me on a path to hyper achieve. The second thing is that our childhood beliefs teach us to please and appease. Let's be that good girl in order to gain love and approval. You know, God forbid that we should be criticized. So we learn that if our words are meek and mild, that we can escape harm. Number three, we were taught to be pretty thin and not too smart. That's right. So we equated our worth with how we looked and we dumbed ourselves down in order to be acceptable and lovable and good enough. In other words, when a girl feels fat and ugly, she can be manipulated. Number four, she was taught to be the strong one. So when we're growing up, we can try to hold it together for everybody else and in order to feel valuable, in order to feel needed, that people rely upon us. Um, and so that's if we've pushed ourselves really hard and we have some measure of success to, that feels good to us. So we become the strong one. And the last one is that as a child, we are traumatized. We are traumatized by many belief systems that I've mentioned so far, but also we can feel like a victim and we can feel like a hyper rational up in our head or controlling. There are many ways. Life in a child's nervous system often feels overwhelming and traumatic. So these traumatic experiences get housed as hidden grief. And I'll share next with you a story of Tabitha to highlight what I'm talking about. So to illustrate how we can be traumatized as a child, I want to talk to you about the taming of Tabitha. And when Tabitha was growing up, she had three brothers, older brothers, who were always fighting, bloodying their noses, blacking their eyes. And, you know, Tabitha had this sensitive spirit, but she wanted to be one of them. And so one day they were just kind of throwing her around like a rag doll. And when she started to tear up, they started calling her a sissy girl. And so Tabitha learned to be silent and compliant, and she hated it. She really wanted to be angry and tell them about it. But what, what this translates to as an adult, she has this hidden grief within her that seems to be keep crop, cropping up in her work and home life, which is I can't speak up and I constantly feel bullied and I'm trapped because I'd rather not say anything than be left out and alone. Um, so she remains in a job that she hates and she feels like she can't be herself. So what do we as women leaders need to reclaim our power? One, 
We need to feel safe in our body and trust our own judgments, really reconnect with our body and our feelings. Number two, we need to have a safe space where we can let that mask down of I got to be strong for everybody and receive support. Number three, we need to look at our hidden grief. You know, those childhood patterns of trauma that are stuck in our body and we don't even know it. Number four, we need techniques that will address us as an energetic being because they're the most effective in advance to heal the hidden grief. And number five, what we don't need is to be rescued and advised. We need to learn how to empower ourselves, trust our own intuition, and, and when we slow down and really take a look at what's going on for our life, we can do that. What does the women leader really need? She needs closeness and connection, knowing someone's got her back. But she's convinced herself that she has to avoid this empty feeling in her heart. And she does this through numbing out, like with alcohol and food and Netflix and excess busyness. None of that's bad. It's just that when it's used to avoid what's really going on, then it becomes detrimental. And so what is available to the woman leader when she stops people pleasing is this calm aliveness, feeling safe on this planet, feeling congruent with how she spends her time, prioritizing who and what really matters to her the most, eating real food, releasing shame that she spends so much energy covering up, feeling like the apple of her lover's eye, supported, nurtured, and adored and feeling the backing of a few close friends who love her unconditionally, feeling comfortable in her own body. This woman of self-respect wants to drink good water, good quality water to hydrate her body. She wants to receive plenty of money to not only cover all of her needs, but to cover a lot of those pleasurable desires that she has. And she wants to feel like she's enough, no matter how much she accomplishes on that mile long to-do list. So these are some of the things that she really wants and she hasn't felt like she could slow down to get them. So I invite you to have a conversation with me. Go out to my website, harmonyharbor.com and go to the contact page, reach out. I'm here to support you as I step up into my leadership qualities and I realize that I haven't allowed myself to do that for so long and now I'm claiming that I'm making that stake in the ground right now. I'm here to support you like you've never been supported before. Please reach out to me and let's have a conversation.